So if you want FPS like this, then go ahead and watch this full video where I'm gonna show you how to get the best FPS possible out of your PC here. My name's Pernil from SenseQuality.com and today we're gonna be going through all the Warzone settings and out of game settings to improve your performance in the game there so you can have better bullet registration and also have an advantage over your enemies so you can see your enemies before they see you. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, Warzone there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on Warzone season one and we're gonna go to the toggle wheel at the top right. You're gonna go to graphics and you're gonna put the display mode at full screen exclusive. The only reason that I have it at full screen borderless right now is just because I'm showing you guys the settings. You're going to match your screen refresh rate with the refresh rate of your monitor. This is a huge one, guys. And a display resolution with the resolution of your monitor there. So make sure that those match. And the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down to Nvidia Reflex Low Latency. This is if you have an Nvidia card. I don't believe AMDs have this, so you could skip this part. Basically, if you are CPU bottleneck, that's when you use NVIDIA On Plus Boost. If you are GPU bottlenecked, that's when you use On, right? So basically the way that you could check if your CPU or GPU bottlenecked is if you go into the multiplayer on Call of Duty Black Ops 6, for example, you can check a benchmark and you're gonna look to see if your average CPU FPS is lower than your average GPU FPS there. Whichever has the lowest FPS is what's causing that bottleneck there and what's holding back your FPS. So what you're gonna do from that, let's say my CPU has the lowest FPS, I'm gonna put on plus boost. If my GPU is causing the lowest FPS, I'm gonna put on. Another way you could do this is turning on CPU and GPU time here in interface and telemetries. And basically you're gonna turn on CPU, GPU time, and you're gonna run the game there. Once you run the game, whichever has the highest time in milliseconds, at the top right, you see my GPU is four, right? My CPU is six. You're gonna run in-game setting in Warzone. Whatever in-game has the highest time is your bottleneck there. So that's where I would put the Nvidia on plus boost if you have a CPU and NVIDIA on if you have a GPU. I know that was a little bit complicated, but trust me, that is very important, guys. The next thing I would do is turn off VSync, right? And go to customer frame rate, and then I would do custom. And from here, what I would do is gameplay custom frame rate limit. I would put this at the limit of your monitor. So mine is 360, but I can't go up to 360, but that's okay. I would do menu custom frame rate to 60, to be honest, and out of focus custom frame rate to 30. And basically the reason why I would do this is just because when you're not gaming and you have your PC in the main menu, you don't want it using up all your resources here and making the GPU or the CPU hotter. So you wanna set a custom frame rate, that way when you're in between matches, your FPS is still going to be pretty good, right? So basically this just guarantees that no matter how much matches you play in a row, your FPS is still gonna be consistent. I know a lot of you guys have the problem where if you play like 10 matches in a row, your FPS starts to dip. This is why here. So you'll put these custom frame rate settings on here. The next thing that you'll do is do uh, optimal for reduced menu uh, render and then pause game render. And you're gonna turn this on. You put this to whatever time you want. I just put it at 10 minutes. That way when I leave my PC, basically it doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about the PC overworking and stuff like that. You would put focus mode on zero, high dynamic range, HDR on off. And then we're gonna go over to quality here. Now this is a very important part guys. So please watch this. So basically the first setting that we're gonna go through is we're gonna turn off dynamic resolution. We're gonna make sure our render resolution is set at 100 and we're gonna go to the upscaling. Now, if you want the game to look good, uh, you would put Fidelity Cast on. If you want just like more FPS in general because you're getting really low FPS, you can use NVIDIA DLSS. That's perfectly fine there too. A lot of people use it and you could put it on quality or performance. You want more FPS, you would do performance there. Uh, but I personally like Fidelity Cast there just because it's showing me what's really happening in the game. Plus it's adding an extra layer of sharpness there. And this is what the professional players use. The NVIDIA DLSS frame generation, you always want this off here. This introduces input lag. So you don't want this on at all. VRAM scale target, I would put this at 80 if you're having GPU issues like dev errors or scanner repairs. And I would put it at 90 if you're not having any of those issues there. Frame variable rate shading, I would turn this on. This is very important, that increases your FPS. And these are more uh, personal preference. So 
let's say you want the best FPS possible, you would put the texture resolution and the texture anatropic on low there. Let's say you want the game to look a little bit better. You would put the texture resolution on normal and the texture filter and a tropic on normal as well. And that's perfectly fine there. If you have like a 4090, you could put this on high, but I personally wouldn't recommend it. I want the most FPS possible. That's why I paid for these PC parts. So I run everything on very low. That's what the pros do as well. If you like naturally aesthetic game that just looks good, that's when you would just run these on high. Depth of field, off. Detail quality, low. Particle resolution, very low. Uh, most of these are low and off here. On-demand texture quality uh, streaming is minimal. Uh, local texture streaming quality. You can put this on low there. Actually put this on normal. Shadow quality on very low. Screen shadow, space shadow off. All of these on off or low for the shadow lighting. Environment, all of these on off or low here as well. So that should be good. And then the next thing that you do is come over to the view screen and... Field of view, if you're using a controller, you shouldn't be anywhere above 107 field of view as it messes with your aim assist. If you are using keyboard, uh, mouse and keyboard, right? You would use 120 uh, field of view in general. ADS, uh, effective field of view, I just leave that on affected. Weapons field of view, I just leave this on wide. That way I could see more when I'm not uh, aim down sight. And then motion blur, I would turn this off. Weapon motion blur off. Uh, the camera movement, 50% for each. Inverted flashbang on right and there's two more settings that you want to look at right so basically if you're on a controller or you're on a mouse and keyboard you want to just turn off sprint cancel movement reload okay and basically the second thing you want to do is you want to go to audio settings and then you want to go to audio mix and then you want to make sure that this is set to sucker punch there so the next thing you want to do is you want to go to controllers and then you want to go to your combat settings here and from here you're going to go to your combat advanced settings and you would go ahead and turn off sprint cancel reload there uh that is very annoying there so you really want to turn that off and for the audio for you to hear the best footsteps possible you want to turn on reduce uh to the night of sound and you want to turn the audio mix to sucker punch there so that should work perfectly fine there now let's go ahead and move to the out of game settings here so you can have the best fps possible all right so now we are set up for the out of game settings here so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to your documents you're going to go to call of duty you're going to go to players and you'll see a whole bunch of files here and all you want to do is just get rid of all these files and just delete it here so i'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these files here you can keep the folders but delete, delete all the files there right the next thing you want to do is you're going to use the link down below the sense quality link and basically what you're going to go into is warzone settings here you're going to copy these files, right? And you're just going to paste it into your players folder here. And basically that's after you download it from the link there. And that should help a lot. This is going to help with all of the in-game settings for you here. And let me just go through some of them with you just so you can edit them for your particular PC because one size doesn't fit all for these. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to control fine in your notepad when you open these up, right? And you want to look for gpu upload heaps and you want to make sure that this is false right so i would just type in heap for example and make sure that this says false on this side if it doesn't switch it to false with lowercase right so you just open your text you would look for heap you would set that to false and you would do the same for these three so you do it for dot text dot text zero and dot text one there and then the next thing that you'll do is you're going to look for uh your render work count there so I'm going to scroll all the way down here. All right. So as you can see, my render work count is basically seven currently, right? So basically this is for like Intel PCs. You want it at seven or eight. That's perfectly fine. On Ryzen's PCs, uh, basically it depends. If you're on a Ryzen and you have more than eight cores, you want your render work count to be half of whatever your cores are. So if you're on a Ryzen CPU, right, uh, like a 7900X or a 7950X, for example, you and you have 12 cores, you want your render work count to be six. If you are on a Ryzen and you have 16 cores, you want your render work count to be eight. So basically that should be perfectly fine there. And if you are on uh, a system that has uh, eight cores or less, you always want it at eight or seven or less there. So you want it matching your render work count. If you don't have eight cores, then I wouldn't even touch this setting it should be perfect the way it is there. So that should be perfectly fine there. The next setting that we're going to look over is basically virtual texture memory mode description. You want this set to extra large there, and then you want a texture filter, right? You want this set to anatropic 2X. You want your uh, static sun shadow moment clip resolution. Uh, you want this set to 256 or zero there. 
You want enable half resolution reflection probes to true. You want enable persistent damage layer to false. You want corpse culling hold to 0.5. You want your AA technique preferred, SMAA. That's going to be the right one. Corpse limit, you want this set to zero or one. And the big one is going to be the limit blood effects. You want this set to true. And then blood limit interval, you want this set to 2000 there. So that's going to make a massive difference in your game there. And remember, you're going to have to change these settings on a .txt file, the .txt zero file, and the .txt one file. So make sure to change all three of those before you start your game there. And don't forget to control save there. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into NVIDIA control panel and you're just going to type that into your search bar. If you have an NVIDIA GPU and you're going to be looking for manage 3D settings and you're going to scroll down here, you're going to make sure that your power management mode is on uh, max performance and your texture filtering quality is on high performance. So that should be good there. And you're going to make sure that your resolution on your monitor is set to the highest one at change resolution and your refresh rate here is set to the highest one as well. Then you're going to go over to adjust desktop color settings. You are going to set the digital vibrance to 70. So that way the game looks a little better. 70 or 75 it's really personal preference on what you want and then you're going to set the contrast to 55 and your brightness to 55 and you're just going to press apply there and that should be good for g-sync let me just explain this one to you real quick so if you want your game to feel smooth you want g-sync on right if you want just the lowest uh, latency possible and everything like that you want g-sync off if you are using obs and you stream on your pc by any chance you want G-Sync off as well. So that should be good there. As long as you uh, adjust those settings on an NVIDIA GPU, you should be fine. Now, let me go through some other things here. So basically what's holding your FPS back, right? A lot of people say to me when they get like a PC tune at sensequality.com, hey, Cornell, like my FPS is not looking great here. Like I'm not sure why I'm getting such low FPS. So I'm gonna show you or go through step-by-step -step what's holding your FPS back. Number one is probably going to be your temperatures. So you're going to want to check your temperatures with any kind of a uh, temperature monitoring software. I use hardware in for 64 and the basic two things that I look for, I'm going to run it for you guys here is your CPU core temperatures and your GPU temperatures. So I'm going to show you guys that real quick. You're going to go over to sensors and then you're going to scroll down to core temperatures right here, right? And if it's under 90 degrees Celsius, you should be fine. If it's over 90 degrees Celsius, then you either need to reapply your thermal paste or you need to get a better AIO for your CPU you and that'll solve it now for your gpu uh you're gonna have to scroll down a little bit gpu temperatures right here so as you can see it's 46 right now if it's lower than anything like 85 or lower is perfectly fine there so if those temperatures are good your system should be running cool there now the next thing that we're going to be working with is your cpu right so your cpu is kind of like the transmission of the pc it's basically like if your gpu is the engine and it's making your car go extremely fast right and your transmission is very slow it changes gears really slow your pc is going to feel a bit bumpy it's going to be a bumpy ride if you're riding in a car there and you have a very fast engine but your transmission's slow when it shifts gear it's going to be just jerky so you want your cpu to be as fast as possible and the best cpus for warzone right now is going to be the 9800 x 3d for ryzen it's going to be either the 4900k for example that's a really good cpu right now for intel and then if you are on ryzen zen 5 like let's say you have a ryzen 5000 cpu you're going to go to a 5800x 3D and that should be perfectly fine here. So these CPUs are pretty good for Warzone there. These will net you the best FPS possible. Now the best GPUs are honestly going to be uh, Nvidia GPUs there. You're gonna go for like a 4090, you know, like a 4080, 4070 Ti. Super is perfectly fine as well. Uh, and those are gonna net you the most smoothest uh, games possible just because you have things like Nvidia DLSS, etc. And some AMDs are good, but Sometimes AMDs could be a little bit iffy there, so that's fine too. So now the next thing is going to be your RAM here. So if you are on, I think I have a RAM guide. I'll make a RAM guide here, guys. But if you are on DDR4, right, you are going to buy 3600 megahertz CL 14, 14, 14 RAM. And I'll try to leave a link down below, guys. These are very hard to come by, but I'll leave a link down below. But basically you can check if you're on DDR4, if you go to system information, right? 
And then if you look at baseboard product, right, it should show you if you're on like DDR4 or DDR5 and stuff like that. So a lot of uh, motherboards just show if it's DDR4 or DDR5 right here. Mine, unfortunately, doesn't here. But basically, DDR5 is a new gen of RAM, right? So if you're on an Intel, you want, I would say, 7,000 plus megahertz right depending on what your your pc can handle and then what you want is the lowest timings possible and i'll leave a link to the ram that you can get for intel down below there if you have a ddr5 and for ryzen the new ryzen ddr5 you want 6000 megahertz the lowest timings possible and i'll leave a link down below for this as well and you want to make sure that this is expo ram not xmp you want to make sure it's amd expo ram there so i'll leave a link down below for that as well uh, on ddr4 the way that you can tell it's ddr4 is if you have a 12 900k right or lower you should be on ddr4 here to be honest basically that should help as well so again temperatures are huge if your car is going extremely fast and it doesn't have the right cooling it's going to go into limp mode and the same thing happens to your pc even when you don't know it so basically you want to make sure you have the best temperatures possible second is going to be your cpu your cpu is like the transmission of your car right so if your car has a bad transmission it's going to be really janky the ride's not going to be smooth if you want a smooth game you want the best cpu possible which i listed right there now, if you want your engine to have the best horsepower possible so you can go the fastest possible, that's where the GPU comes in here. So basically, you're just going to go with an NVIDIA GPU or an AMD GPU if you prefer that. And then the RAM, the RAM is kind of like the storage space or the trunk space of your car here. So basically, you want the highest, I would say the highest uh, amount of gigabits possible. And I would say, guys, for DDR5 RAM, like if you have a DDR5 PC, you only want two sticks. Trust me on this, guys. Two sticks is just way better than four sticks on DDR5, right? So you want the highest amount of bandwidth possible or gigabits possible for your particular RAM there. That way you can have enough trunk spaces fit your game here. And really, that should be everything that we're uh, going over, guys. So if you need more FPS, you could always visit sensequality.com where I got you covered there. You could find that link down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what other videos that you guys would like to see here. My name is Trinell from Sense Quality and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day here. For this just to see, oh my gosh, your PC is... Did that say 400? Yeah, it said 400, man. What in the world is going on here? What is this PC, my brother? What is what is going on? <laughs> Lord love, have mercy. Love it, love it, love it. Jeez, this is crazy. I mean, I didn't expect that high of FPS. That is insane. It is literally constantly staying at like 300 FPS at 1440p what in the world is this pc wow and what were you getting before there average 180 180 yeah it, well at the end on the benchmark it said average 186 there's no way what look at this bro there's no <laughs> way there's no way look we, at this, it's bro. almost double that is crazy yeah, yeah your bro. cpu is 400 fps your gpu is 358 your GPU definitely increased there. You see how it says 281 for the lowest? So yeah, literally yeah, yeah. on 1440p, your lowest FPS is 281 on your GPU. That's wow. insane. That's wow. insane. Okay.